to uh, introduce today's uh, presentation. Again, it is, I'm going to call it, you know, like on radio shows, they say this is a regular guest. <laughs> so we have, we are fortunate to have Benita Sanabet today. I think this is her third presentation on different food um, ways to make food. We've had mom bread, we had mala in a bag. Today, what we're going to have is the bagel making, but because bagels are never eaten alone in Jewish tradition and bagels are a Jewish food, Benita is also going to be demonstrating a pickled salmon, something that you can eat with the bagel. But of course, uh, you don't have to do both. You should probably do the bagels if you're choosing one. Um, i joking. I actually did try last week's Gravlox um, and the Gravlox herring. So I do try these recipes. And I always like uh, tinkering. I'm not a kitchen person. I'm a barbecue person. But um, I know that the recipes, is his deal. the recipes are always good to try. They're easy. They're very straightforward. So if you do it and you like it, share a picture. I know that Benita would for sure appreciate the feedback. And anytime I get feedback, we share it with her. Um, for the record, the most watched video of all of our videos is Benita Mala in a bag. Um, but there are some other videos that are up there, but that's one of the most watched videos. So again, I do appreciate, um, Benita's time and all of her efforts. There's a lot of preparation that goes into these. So thank you very much. Thanks. And before you begin, I just wanted to make sure everyone is aware tomorrow we're having an astro, uh, a, an astrologer basically, who's going to be talking about, are there other planets that are habitable? for human beings mm. he is a professor at ASU. And um, so that's tomorrow's presentation. But today we again are having Benita Sanabend, who is also the owner of a woman owned bakery, if I can call it that it's it's I don't know that that's the correct word, but Taim. So she does specialty baking for people's events, or just because uh, you could you can maybe talk about that you said, uh, I think you shared in the past, but feel free to share again about that. So I'm going to spotlight Benita. If anyone wants to see everyone, you can always change your own view to gallery view. All right. Thank you, Benita. You're welcome. I, I have to thank you for, for bringing me on and letting me do this because my favorite place is in the kitchen. And um, it was really a joy last week because my son was in town. And so I was cooking for everyone and my daughter was here and it was just, my daughter lives here. So it, it's a joy and I'm, I'm thrilled to be in the kitchen. I, I actually did the bagels with um, Chabad of Paradise Valley and they were so easy. It's, it's the easiest thing I've ever done. So it's so easy and they're so delicious that I now, um, my husband has me making bagels. Well, I, he doesn't have me. He prefers and I prefer to do homemade bagels rather than go out and buy them. Um, cause, uh, it's hard to find good bagels in this town and these are really delicious at any rate. Um, what we're going to do to get started, I have dough made, I'm going to go through the process of making the dough with you. And, um, uh, rabbi has the recipe for the bagels and he also has the recipe for the pickled salmon. And we're going to do that next because, um, we need, uh, that we're going to bake the bagels and you're going to see them come out of the oven, which I can eat like the oven. And um, so in, while we're waiting for the bagels to bake, we'll put together the salmon. That also is very, very easy, but we'll get to that. So the first thing I want to do, the recipe, I don't know, Rabbi, if they can see the recipe, but the recipe calls for bread flour. Well, so, I will, um, Benita, if you tell me to share it, I'll have it for the screen. Yeah, please. You can share it. Um, it, it you know, it, you don't have to put it up right now because I don't think anybody's going to bake along, but as long as it's available. So the recipe calls for bread flour. Never use bread flour. Um, I always use all purpose flour, King Arthur for all purpose flour, but I decided for the purpose of following the recipes precisely, I wanted to use the bread flour. I did make bagels the other day. I didn't like it with bread flour, but I made both recipes for you so you can see the difference in the bagels. Bread flour is a flour that contains more protein, so uh, it absorbs 
more of the liquid and it gets fluffier. I like a real chewy bagel. So I might experiment this week. Uh, tomorrow, but we'll move this over so you can see it. And, and gold metal, I couldn't find King Arthur. Uh, you know how difficult it is to find flour. So I couldn't find King Arthur bread flour. So I settled for gold metal. It's not a real high quality flour. That may have something to do with it. I, I don't know. Um, Cause I always prefer King Arthur. At any rate, um, I may try it with my challah this week. Cause I like that like fluffy and crusty on the outside. Bread flour may work for that. So the first recipe that I made, which I made a recipe this morning, um, is made with bread flour. I'm going to make this recipe with all purpose flour. So if my trusty um, cameraman could come, because we're gonna put everything into the bowl, I want you to see how it incorporates. Um, I, I will tell you that it would work better for you if you had a mixer with a dough hook because that's what really works the dough. I think the dough needs a lot of work to get that gluten going. And other than a uh, dough hook, you, <laughs> it would be a, a really difficult arm workout to need for 10 minutes. So we're gonna start with, I'm gonna get a cup and a quarter of warm water. So if, if camera two, if we could switch to camera two, And we'll get there. So here we go. We got it? Okay, right in the bowl. So, oh, that's perfect. So there's a cup and a quarter of warm water. I have one tablespoon of yeast. And everything goes into the bowl at the same time. So we've got one tablespoon of yeast. We'll sprinkle that on the top. We're going to do three tablespoons of sugar. Three tablespoons of sugar. It calls for two tablespoons of olive oil. You don't have to use olive oil. You can use all purpose, but olive oil gives, adds some flavor to it. Um, the only thing usually that flavors a bagel aside from the dough are the toppings. And the recipe calls for four cups of flour. Start out with three. You can always add more. Uh, you can't always take away. Again, you're gonna see, I'm gonna shake up my flour just to loosen it up. And I'm going to do three loose cups of flour. There's three cups of flour. We'll do like three and a quarter just for good measure. We'll probably be adding more, but let me tell you that the temperature in the room changes it. Uh, the temperature of your water changes it. Um, so we're going to snap this on, put on my dough hook, pardon, yeah. put on my dough hook, and if you want to get in there and, and watch it. So we're going to watch it start to incorporate, um, everything's going to get mixed together. What we are going to do now is add the salt because we don't want to add the salt to the yeast. If you remember, uh, salt is hard to grow to yeast. I put the sugar on top because sugar encourages the growth. Um, and so salt will go in now. And that's the last ingredient. It's really simple. As you can see, it's starting to come together. Really nicely. We're going to do this, need this for eight minutes. Um, you got that? I'm going to go set the timer for eight minutes. Good. 
Did I just ask how much salt was added? A teaspoon of salt. So you see it's getting incorporated. What you want it to do, as you can see in the bowl, it started to gather all of the dough that has been around the, uh, the, around the bowl. That's exactly what you want. It looks pretty good to me. I'm not sure I'm going to add any more flour. I'm going to stop it and I'm going to feel it. It doesn't stick to my fingers, so it's good. So I'm just going to let this go for eight minutes. Rabbi, if you can go back to uh, camera two. I mean, camera one. Okay. So I want to talk to you about the toppings that we use on. Um, let's see. We got, so black sesame seeds, um, white sesame seeds, Poppy seeds. I love my jello seed. My jello is a uh, Middle Eastern seed. It's actually from, from the uh, Africa clan. Um, it has a seed like flavor, but it's very, very unique and really different. And it's just, if you like Middle Eastern seed, uh, if you're a Mediterranean Eastern person, it's just a great, great seed. Do you hear me clearly, Benita? Yes. Um, so possibly best for your mic is if that mixture is moved a little bit further away. So the mic on your iPad picks you up better. Got it. Okay. You want to put that in mm -hmm. All awesome. right. My trusty yeah. companion. <laughs> and then put it on number two. And also okay. are, are there, um, can we ask you some questions now or is it better to wait? Meaning I know you're still talking about you. Oh, no, you can ask me questions if anyone has questions. Yeah. So I'm going to read some from the chat. Okay. So one of them was their yeast is a quarter ounce package, and and they, you obviously have perfect to... one packet. Okay. One and packet then... or one tablespoon. And then the other question was, how do you store your yeast? And I store my yeast in the refrigerator in this glass jar. Remember, because I I have a baking business, I buy yeast in bulk, but I always keep yeast in the refrigerator. You keep it in a pantry with something that gets too warm. We're heading into the really hot days and nothing stays cool. So keep it in the refrigerator. It'll keep it uh, fresh. Uh, the one thing, one of the uh, fail states is when you add warm water to yeast, it should immediately start to bubble a little bit. If it doesn't, then you know that your yeast is dead. Throw your mixture away, um, start with a new yeast, um, but always look at your expiration date. Okay. Someone else asked, what speed is your machine? Two. The recommendation, I have a professional KitchenAid, and so they recommend not more than two. You may be number three on, on the um, uh, household type, but I use, uh, I keep it on number two. And I'm going to do that for eight minutes. In the meantime. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Question is, I'm going to move yeah. this away. Hold on, let's get her. Benita, you have a question coming from the mic. Okay. If you don't have a kitchen aid to go out and buy a piece of equipment, because I know really don't do baking at home. I mean, I've got, I've got mixers and things like that. Is there anything that I can use and, and not have a problem, but do I have to buy a two or $300 piece of equipment to make bagels? No, I would say just go buy a dozen bagels. But if your mixer has a dough hook, otherwise you're going to knead it and knead it really, really hard um, for about 10 minutes. So you can try that and see how it works. The recipe that I have calls for a mixer. Um, but I, you know, doing it by hand is always great. If you have a, a, a you know, just are there any you need to get out all your frustrations. Are there any inexpensive machines that you can get? I mean, you do baking. You're a baker. But if, is there any inexpensive machines that you can get with a gadget like that or not? I don't think there's anything that's inexpensive. Okay. I really don't. Look, look, go to Bed Bath & Beyond with a 20% off coupon. That's probably the cheapest that you'll get it. Okay. So what I want to do... I'm going to boil my water. So now I'm going to get ready because I do have dough that I made this morning. And it's been rising. Now, the only thing that is, is 
the only complicated part about making these bagels is uh, two hours to rise. So it's time consuming, but it's not worth it. So I'm going to put, oh, you can see that. Huh. Okay, so we, we can have uh, camera two, so we can see the, I'm going to turn out the good person. What was that last comment about Phoenix? I'm sorry? Last comment about Phoenix something? I, I Wait one second. All right, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Couldn't understand your last comment about in Phoenix something? You were talking about the East. Oh, it, it's hard to get. Oh, and in Phoenix, yeah, it's warm. And so keep your yeast in the refrigerator. Oh. oh this dough, this is beautiful. If you'll see, it's it's pretty white, and this dough was made with um, a bread flour, and it's just perfect. Um, I don't think there's anything better than uh, the feel of the perfect raw dough. So I'm going to turn this back on for two more minutes. Okay. All right. So what you want to do? The recipe calls for six bagels. This recipe makes six bagels, but they're really large. So I try to do, I do seven or eight um, just to get an average size bagel. Um, wait, one second. I'm just going to turn on the oven to the 375. I just have to look at the ingredients. Oh, 425. And just so okay. everyone knows, while Bina's coming back into the camera, as soon as her mixer's off, you'll hear her um, even louder and clearer. Yeah, I just turned the mixer off. So here's what I want to show you. You want to get an oil bowl. This is the dough that's already risen for two hours. This is the dough that I just made. That's the dough I just made. So you see it's kind of doubled in size. So what you want to do is oil a bowl. I always use um, vegetable spray. Put your dough in, turn it over so that it's um, uh, greased on the top as well. Let me just get mine. I'm going to cover it in plastic. Oh, I've got to turn off. Can you turn off the timer? Mm -hmm. So you cover it in plastic. I usually put my dough in the summertime in the garage. Oh dear. Okay. One second. Okay. I usually put my dough in the garage to rise because it's really nice and warm in there but it's a little too warm and it'll activate it too much. So I do cover it with plastic, cover it with a towel, and I'm gonna put it in my pantry, but I will do that. And it's gonna rise for two hours. So now, here's the first batch of dough that I made. It's really beautiful. It's very silky. I got it into a nice ball. I have my pad, my silk hat. I have a um, pastry knife here. So I'll cut it in I'm gonna make eight bagels. If you wanna be precise, use a scale way out so that you've got Uh, even even pieces. So here's what you want to do. You want to roll it into a ball. Let me get my pan here. You want to roll it into a ball. We could probably use camera one for this. 
There we go. Roll it into a ball. Then you're going to put your finger in the middle and, and make a bagel. Roll it into a ball. Actually, let's go back to camera two and, and put that there. Yep. Here we go. So we roll it into a ball. Just squeeze it in the middle to make the hole. Put your two fingers in there. Open it up. And you got yourself a bagel. Make it nice and round. They don't have to be perfect unless you intend on selling them. But the taste is delicious. So we're going to do that. We've made eight bagels out of this. As I say, the recipe calls for six, um, but they're really large. So it's, it's really your preference. Here we go. So if anybody has any questions, yeah. now's a great time. When do you put uh, the filling in? Um, if you wanted to make a raisin bagel, you would press the raisins in at this point. If you wanted to make a cinnamon raisin bagel, um, you would um, put the right, press the raisins in and then get a plate of cinnamon sugar because we're going to boil these and then we're going to bake them. So I'll show you how the toppings go on after. I wouldn't suggest chocolate chip because we boil and then bake and then they're just going to be um, like a chocolate marble bagel. Um, you'll lose the effect. Um, you could put fresh blueberries in, although I think the only real bagels are sesame or poppy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, so here we go. Did you use bread flour or regular flour for this recipe? This recipe that I'm doing right now is bread flour. The recipe that I did, um, that I mixed up for you is all purpose flour. There's a difference in how, these will get a little, as I say, because bread flour has more protein, these will get a little softer and a little larger. And I have my water boiling. I'm going to turn on the light too. I'm going to add honey to the water. It's the honey that will give your bagel the nice skin on it, which instead of a crust, it's got a skin. And any bagel worth its uh, salt has a nice skin on it. So there we go. And one more. So Benita. Um, yeah. A couple questions that are in the chat that I'll read out to you. Okay. If you don't have an industrial kitchen aid like what you had, but more of like the ones that are standard in homes. Perfect. Like smaller. Is Perfect. It, would you still do it on speed two? No, you could you, um, uh, zoom it up to speed three. Okay. So Elaine, that was for you. Yeah. Um, and start it off at number two, just so that your flour doesn't go everywhere. Okay. So ramp it up slowly. Now- yeah. Would you call these Montreal bagels? These are absolutely not Montreal bagels. That's why they're good. What makes a Montreal bagel a Montreal bagel? A Montreal bagel for me, because I'm not Montrealers. <laughs> Montrealers. For me, I'm not from Montreal, but Montreal bagels are very dense. They're, they're hard. They're not meaty. They're not chewy inside. And I don't like them. But They're delicious. I, stop it. But um, St. Theater is is uh the bagel place to go to in montreal anyway we're going to go over to the cooktop so let me turn on this light but uh, montreal bagels are also boiled yes i don't know yes yeah yes yes, yes. so okay. as you can see i have the water boiling montreal bagels are boiled in honey water that's exactly what i'm doing here is boiling there we go. In honey water mm -hmm. And so I just poured in the honey, which took the water down from boiling. And while the water comes back up to boil, I'm going to put my, um, am I boiling? Yep. Okay. I'm going to put my spices out here uh, on a, 
uh, clip, but let's get back to the boiling. Woo! There we go. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna drop them in. You gonna make them, honey? Um, four at a time. The recipe says three, but drop them in four at a time. Gonna let it go for about a minute and then turn it over. I'll show you what I use to turn it over. If I knew the name, I would tell you, but I don't. But it's called a strainer. Kind of like it's like a strainer uh, spatula almost. A We're skimmer. Boil, what is it? A skimmer? A skimmer. I like oh. it. Thank you. So they're boiling away. Going to turn them over. And how long did you say they boil for? About a minute on each side. Okay. The recipe tells you that they're okay when they float to the top, but I find that they're always at the top. So just about a minute on each side. And how much honey did you put in? Half a cup. Okay. So here we go. I'm gonna put those back on my baking pan. Again, I always line my uh, pans with uh, parchment. Put in the other four. It's really easy and they're really delicious. You know what? I left out a step. They're supposed to sit to rise for 15 minutes. I just realized I left out a step, but you won't know the difference. Izzy will because he's eating them. You so might, those might be <laughs> Montreal bagels then. <laughs> But the fact that it's bread flour, they're going to be so. Uh, according to the uh, recipe, you're going to want to after you shape them into a ball, you're going to want to cover them with a towel and let them sit for 15 minutes. Um, I let that step out, but that's okay for the sake of time. The one thing I do know is they're going to taste delicious. So um, there's very little when you get comfortable with baking any type of bread. I will tell you that there's very little you can do to ruin it. It's very hearty. It's very, most of these recipes are very, very forgiving and it's very, very difficult to mess them up. It's not like a cake and it's not like cookies. So, um, you know, I don't think this 15 minutes is gonna make a difference, but Izzy will be the judge of that later. So here we go. So I have, Very nice looking bagels. And we're coming back here. So I'm going to um, do sesame. And uh, going to mix some black sesame seeds in there as well just for makes them look pretty it doesn't have much different of a taste I'm going to use some nigella because I love the flavor of this it just makes it it's so interesting and we will use poppy Get this off. There we go. And poppy seeds. So what you want to do, take your bagels, dip them, put them back on your, in your baking pan. They bake at 425 and they bake for about 20 minutes. I find I bake them a little longer because I like them a little bit darker. They've cooled down somewhat, so they're very, very easy to handle. Don't be intimidated because seriously, very easy and very, very forgiving.
And the smell of those nigella seeds are really wonderful. And there we have it. There's your bagel. So it's 425 for 20 minutes. I find that I usually bake them for a bit longer um, just because I like them a bit crustier. Uh, as soon as the oven heats up, I'm gonna put them in. In the meantime, we're gonna switch gears and I'm gonna bring over the ingredients for pickled salmon. The pickled salmon, um, um, we can look, yeah, well, yeah, thank you. So the pickled salmon is really very, very much like um, the pickled herring that, that I grew up with. Um, I think that <laughs> my, the thing that um, threw me off last week when, when um, I was at Hani or Hana did the, the, the um, Gravlox last week and she called it herring Gravlox. I expected it to be like this. I see I have the flower. Um, I expected it to be like my recipe. It's not my recipe. The recipe is from Joyce Goldstein. Um, she owns a restaurant. I don't know if it's still in business in San Francisco called Square One. Um, she's not a kosher chef, but she's a Jewish chef and has, that was a very, very popular restaurant in San Francisco for a long time. Um, anyway, this is her recipe. It's out of Joan Nathan's uh, Jewish holiday cookbook, just so that you know. Um, the recipe from the Hollas, uh, for the bagels, let me tell you, came from um, a kosher caterer in Oahu, uh, Hawaii. So it's the international, <laughs> today's international baking day. Let me go put my bagels in. Give me a sec, because my oven's hot. There we go. Now I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes. And I'm going to get out my salmon and water. Okay. So I'm going to bring all of the ingredients for the uh, salmon. Get my salmon at Costco. Um, I bought a small filet. The recipe uh, calls for two pounds. It makes a lot. It really does. I usually serve this at Passover along with the filthy fish for appetizer. Let me just get my ingredients. While you're doing that, for the person who asked, maybe he can knead the dough in a uh, food processor. You know, I think that the blade is is too tough. There is so, a plastic blade. Some food yeah, processors. I've not. Abby Mandel makes hollow in with a food processor. Actually, I have a hollow recipe that is a food processor recipe. I just don't happen to like it. I think that a mixmaster or your hands gets into the dough a lot better. So for me, that's, that's preferable. Um, I need another bowl. Yeah, I do. Okay, so here we go. I'm ready. And I always keep the recipe right in front of me because I just need to make sure that I know I'm doing what I'm doing, that I know what I'm doing. Okay, so the recipe for the um, uh, pickled salmon calls for a fresh, salmon filet. It calls for you to uh, take two cups of vinegar and a cup and a half of water. And again, uh, Rabbi has this recipe. You want to boil that with sugar and with salt and let it come back down to room temperature. This is your pickling liquid. So that's a simple, this also is such a simple recipe for such a delicious outcome. So the first thing, um, it also calls for sliced onion. So what I always do with onion is I slice it and I soak it in ice cold water. That way the um, bitterness comes out. Your, your onion stays fresh. Um, camera two for a sec. There we go. Um, there, so the bitterness comes out of your onion and your onion stays fresh that way. So I always soak it in, in uh, ice water. How long do you soak 
You know what? It's been soaking for at least a half hour, if not more. So I don't think that, um, you know, you're not going to want to do it overnight. But I used a white onion. You can use a sweet onion. You can use a yellow onion. Um, this also, it, so it takes some of the bitterness out. So here's what you want to do. Uh, the other ingredients call for pickling spices and bay leaves. And that's kind of it. Your salt and your sugar has been in your water. So what you want to, oh, and you need a glass jar. So here's a glass jar, use a mason jar. This will fill up, it makes a lot. So we're having bagels, <laughs> bagels and pickled salmon for dinner at my house. Oh yeah. So there we go. So here's a, basically what it is is a layering process because the cooking is done in the refrigerator for the next three or four days. So you have a beautiful filet of salmon. You want to cut pieces that are about an inch. Oh, we should, there we go. Did you buy that, skin salmon? Did I buy? Skins or it had the skin on? No skin. No skin. And it's always, um, you never know what you're going to get with, this is Costco. So there's no skin. You don't want to use the skin regardless because that, that just gets too chewy. So we have, just gonna cut up all the salmon, about an inch to an inch and a half. When you get to the thick part, um, the longer you uh, let it marinate, of course, the better it is. It'll stay in the refrigerator like pickled herring for a month, two months. And then we're just gonna cut these. There we go. You're just gonna layer them, almost layer them like a lasagna. So you're gonna have a layer of salmon, a layer of onions, sprinkle on some of the uh, pickling spices, layer of salmon, a layer of onions, and just, and then you pour the liquid on top and you put it in the refrigerator and your job is done. It is just so delicious. It's a really delicious recipe. If it has, the, if it has the skin, can you pickle it with the skin? You know what? I think you can pickle it with the skin. Um, you'll have to pickle it a little bit longer, but then it's also going to be a little more difficult to eat. So if you can cut the skin off, that would be great. So we're going to start. We're going to put some um, salmon, and we're just going to layer. The recipe calls for uh, six bay leaves, but you know what? That really is uh, up to you. But let me get out the six bay leaves. Um, now, the onions. Can you put jalapenos in this as well or other? You can put jalapenos in. You can use green onions. Um, anything that will give you the savory flavor you want. The, these onions really make it very authentic tasting um, that it's, it's it, you know, the only thing I like in it too is the herring. So... Uh, we'll put a couple of bay leaves. We'll sprinkle some pickling spices on. When it comes to this, I don't measure. It's just kind of enough to cover. So here we go. We're going to put some more salmon on top. And because you're going to pour your liquid into cover, really doesn't um, matter. But always remember, use glass or porcelain. Uh, don't use plastic, it'll absorb, and you don't want to do that. And I use large onions. Uh, what were you saying about absorbing? Oh, you don't want to you don't want to do this in plastic because your plastic will absorb and you really need the um, the glass to to help this out a glass bowl is the best 
Now remember, your salt and your sugar is already in here um, with your vinegar and your water. And I didn't make this, pre-make it, because it won't look any different um, than what you're seeing in the jar. So I, I usually, when I um, cook for you, I always have a finished product. The bagels are baking so you can see the finished product. Um, but here, you just have to taste it. So uh, we can give out my address. <laughs> but nobody's going out of their house. Okay, there we go. I'm going to put some more um, bay leaves in and I'm not following the quantity and the recipe. I'm going to put more pickling spices in and now I'm going to pour in all of the liquid. so that it fully covers perfection. And now the hard part is it's got to sit in the refrigerator for three or four days, four days is better. And that's pickled salmon, that's as easy as it gets. Um, and, and seriously, I, I could smell it. It's so delicious between the pickling spices, the vinegar, the um, uh, bay leaves. Uh, it's just really, really delicious. So let's get this. I'm going to put this in the fridge and then we have a few more minutes with the bagels. Where do you get pickling spices? Uh, ben just stepped out of the room, but here's the, these are McCormick. Oh. You want to know where you get your pickling spices? Oh, um, any grocery store, actually. Um, that was the other thing. I think the pickling spices are really, it's like an ingredient. It's got cloves and it's got bay leaves and it's got coriander and it has lots of different spices. So rather than buy them each individually or use them all individually, you just buy pickling spices. They're at every grocery store. Um, I think that the what you want to do like every day go into uh, the refrigerator and just shake that, your, your bowl up a little bit just to get um, some of the uh, liquid circulating, but don't open it up and stir it. You don't need to do that. So we have, how much more time's left on the ten. bagels? So we have 10 minutes left on the bagels. I really would love to see, love for them to, so I, I wish I could tap dance. Uh, <laughs> for the next 10 minutes, but they're looking lovely, aren't they? They're really looking beautiful. Oh, all right, Izzy, uh, if you go to the next camera too, we'll show you them in the oven. This is so professional, isn't it? Oh, perfect. So you see how nicely they're baking up? Mm -hmm. They still need to be a little bit more brown for me, but I will take them out of the oven at 20 minutes for the sake of time. And I appreciate you all hanging in there. Vanita, while you're uh, waiting, uh -huh. we can, can switch uh, back. If, can anyone switch has, back. if anyone has a really good joke that they wanted to share that I should put in the booklet for tomorrow's Shabbat to go for whoever's getting, um, I'll even give you the credit. Ah. <laughs> Who had, somebody had a comedian on, it might have been your brother, um, had a really funny guy on. Was it your, mm -hmm. Did your brother have a comedian, did somebody have a comedian on Zoom? Not that I know, we did. I know. I know, he was, uh, um, the, um, no, no, there was another, that one, Avi, Ari was his name. Avi was for us. Yeah, but there was somebody else I saw. There was a, um, there was, there was a Chabad guy. Who, who did, I thought it was on Shlemy had him. You ought to talk to your brother. I don't think it was Jana. But anyway, so these are two really, really simple recipes. The only thing about them is that they're 
the time consumption is in the waiting. The time consumption is for the, the bagel dough has to rise for two hours. Um, the baking is, is 20 minutes. That's not a big deal. You see how easy it is to get that dough together. It's easier than, I'm telling you, I was, I was shocked when I first made it. I watched it being made, but when I did it myself, I was so surprised because it comes together so easy and it's so beautiful. So um, there's the salmon recipe. And Benita, Benita, here's some questions that some people were asking while you were working on that. Yeah. So number one is, uh, was your jar larger than a gallon? I wish I knew. Um, no, I think it, it might be, you know what? It is, um, I'll tell you what it is. It was a quart. My jar was a quart, maybe a quart and a half. Okay. Yeah, because um, I used four cups of water and, and that's a quart and it came to the top. Okay, and then here are, um, so recipe wise, I'm just sharing with everyone before I ask you the next question that if you got, if you received today's email reminding you about today's presentation, the recipes were in there just beneath the picture of Benita. So about halfway down the email. Um, but again, I'm just sharing what you see on the screen so you can have it in front of you. Here was a question. Can you mix in sour cream after it's finished, like creamed herring? You know, that's an excellent question. I don't know, but if you took a small amount to uh, experiment with, I would say have at it. Because I do like creamed herring, but um, um, I imagine that you could. This is just such a nice change. And it, it's just, as I say, I always make this for Passover. Um, serve it along with the filter fish. Um, it's, it's just so different. And, and it's a really, um, I think it's such a unique flavor and people aren't necessarily used to it. And also from an aesthetic standpoint, salmon is a lot more pleasing to look at than herring. And so I think that's also why it, it, it's so pleasant. Um, oh, if you look behind me, I'll do a little, these plates, those fish plates, if you see those fish plates, um, those were my mother's. She, my parents would have been married 70 years. And um, my mother got those plates. Um, I think I have five. I don't know how many were in the set. And I do have a long platter. But my mother got those plates as uh, an engagement gift. So um, they're really very, very special. And um, there was a time when I did serve filter fish on them. Um, and then when we moved, I decided when they, and they went back in the Passover box that stayed in the um, uh, garage. And so I decided that when we moved, um, I put them up and display them. So that's always, that's, I love those. We have five minutes left for the bagels. All right. So we need a joke. We need a joke. I've got a joke. Oh, oh who is that? Dan. Okay. Okay, this uh, little girl goes to her mom and she wants to know where children, uh, where families grew, how the, the world grew. And she go, her mother says to her, well, God created Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve had children, and they in turn had children, and that's how the world came into being. And then she goes over to her father and she asks the same question. Dad, where did children come from and families grow? He said, well, we started out as monkeys. He says, and then there were, you know, changes over the years. And then human beings were developed. And that's how we came into being. And at night at dinner, she turns to her mother and she says, mom, you lied to me about where people come from. Dad said they came from monkeys. She says, no, neither one of us lied to you. My family came from Adam and Eve. Your father's <laughs> family came from monkeys. Very good, like Stan. It. Nice, very nice. <laughs> I like it. I might Stan. Stan, are you the cook in the family? Pardon? Are you the chef in your family? Most of the yeah. time. Yeah. Most of the time. Oh, uh, nice. What happened was I retired before Betty, and she said, Why should I come home from work and cook? And I started cooking. She retired. I'm still cooking. Oh, <laughs> oh that's sweet. Great. Well, now I you should it. cook together. Right. Sometimes. Usually it's one or the other. When we do barbecuing, interestingly enough, she does the barbecuing. Oh, how oh, interesting. Wow. That is interesting. Yeah. Lovely. You know, in my Lovely. family, the exact opposite. Huh. 
I do the barbecuing and I don't cook. Well, that, most families, it's usually the guy that does the barbecue. Yeah. Yeah, we, it's like the famous pictures, you know, as if we did all the work. Yeah. Right. Um, well, but I've, got real, I've got a real short one if you want. Yes, yeah, we I, love it. Let's hear okay. it. Okay. Um, well, apropos for the time that we are um, at oh, home indeed. and baking, and Benita, I must tell you that last night was the first time I baked your challah, by the way. In oh, the, wonderful. The talk, and it's gorgeous. Oh, so Lou is invited over for dinner tonight, so he'll get to share it. But here's this, here's this whole thing. Um, it says, my heart says chocolate and wine, but I guess today we can say my heart says bagel and cream cheese and lox, but my <laughs> genes say, for the love of God, woman, eat a salad. <laughs> Very nice, Jen. So on the uh, salad note, someone sent me a joke because they're watching it on Facebook, and they sent me this: Why should you knock on the refrigerator before you open it? Why? Uh, there could be a salad oh, dressing. Very cute. I got a knock knock joke. What's the punchline? I, I said I have a knock knock joke. Let's hear it. Um, why shouldn't why why did the um? I'm Myra. I, <laughs> knock knock. Okay. Um, who's there? <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> Okay, um, you can't come in. I'm. I have the dressing in here. <laughs> All right. I, one more. One joke that Izzy just found in a, in a book of Jewish wit and wisdom. It's food related. It's food related. He found this joke, and then the bagels will be done. Um, a Jewish man and a Chinese man were talking. The Jewish man commented upon what a wise people the Chinese are. Yes, replied the Chinese man, our culture is over 4,000 years old, but you Jews are very wise people too. The Jewish man replied, yes, our culture is over 5,000 years old. And the Chinese man was incredulous. That's impossible, he replied. Where did your people eat for 1,000 years? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, I'm, I'm, All right, I'm going to go get the bagels. All right, so... Uh, while we're waiting for the bagels, again, tomorrow, 1230, we have a presentation by Dr. Evgenia Skolnik from uh, ASU, a professor uh, who is researching. She has a number of research things that she is doing currently. One of them is actually min miniature satellites or something like that. But she's going to be talking about habitable planets. Are there, out, are there any uh, habitable planets? Here we go. All right, Benita. Okay. So there we go. So, like I say, the um, the the Even holes, holes. The holes kind of seem to close up. So there's it could be two reasons. Number one, I realize I'm not a fan of bread flour. I've never baked with bread flour. This is the second time. So I realize I'm not a fan. And it also um, may have. I'll take responsibility. It may have something to do with them not having risen for 15 minutes. But just so that you see these, if you make them into eight bagels, um, you'll see these are the size of them. I think they're the perfect size. Um, they did rise more. The bagels with all-purpose flour will not be this large. They're a little denser. Um, it, it, again, it's it's the difference in the flour. It's the protein that makes it a little softer. But this is your end result. That looks good to me. Can you describe what is kneading and how do you know when you're done? It's kind of mixing and squeezing. Yeah, but... well, it's not squeezing. You don't want to, you want to always use uh, this part of your hand. You want it, you don't want to get your fingers into it. You want to get the palm of your hand into it. Because once you get your fingers into it, it gets all over your hands and it's really a mess. I would number one suggest to wear gloves and that way keeps your hands cleaner and, and the heat from your hand will tend to make the dough stick to your hand. So what you wanna do when you need, um, and you know what, I'll get a little piece of dough and I'll show you. So let me get this. 
so that you see how I'll take some of the um, uh, bagel dough. All right, so here's a little bit of the bagel dough, just to give you an idea. If we could do camera two, let's just get an idea. We'll get some flour on so it's not so sticky. Um, and so what you wanna do is you wanna pull it like this. You wanna use the palm of your hand, stretch it out, that activates the gluten. Um, once, when you're incorporating the liquid into the flour, and you're not using a mix master and you're only using a hand, use a wooden spoon. Get, stir it until all of the liquid is somewhat incorporated. At that point, when the liquid's incorporated and you don't have a sloshy mess, you can take it, turn it out onto a floured surface and then get it together, pull it like that, fold it back, pull it, fold it back, pull it, fold it back. That's the best way to knead dough. It activates the gluten. It's for any kind of bread that you make. You wanna get that gluten going so that you get the nicest rise possible. You do that in small sections then? or you No, 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 you'll use the whole ball. I took this out of the bagel dough because that still has to rise for two hours. So I just took this out to show you, but you wanna use your entire ball of dough. And so it'll be a lot <clears throat> easier to work with obviously. And, and the more you pull it and the more you knead it, you may need to add more flour um, because uh -huh. if, if it starts to stick to you, it's too sticky. But be very, very cautious with how you add it because once you add too much, it's too late. You can always add, you can never take away. I think it's interesting that the recipe called for four cups yeah. and you just started with much less. It did about three and a half, but as I say, it depends on the temperature of the room, depends on the humidity in the room. Um, this recipe comes from Hawaii where there's a lot of humidity um, and it's in the house as well. Our houses are very dry and it's summertime. And so it just depends on how things get absorbed. Um, and, and so that's why it's always oh, when yeah. you're making a cake, use the exact amount. When you're making cookies, use the exact amount. When you're baking bread, always use at least a half a cup less. You can always add. And you'll know that you need to because it won't be this beautiful. It won't, it'll be sticky and it'll be, you know, once, once you get to the point where it doesn't stick to your fingers and it doesn't stick to your hand like this, you know that your dough's perfect. And when it feels like, like a little baby tuchus, a little baby thigh, a funky baby thigh. Hi, Morty. How are you, Susan Portnoy? I'm calling my There we go. Look here, I'm Morty. Okay. All right, Vanita, thank you so much. You're for... welcome. Thank you for indulging me. It was a whole hour. Thank you, thank you. And everybody enjoy. And please let me know how everything turned out. Pictures, let us know. Let Rabbi know how everything turned out. Here's the lovely bagel. You see the bottom. Okay. They're well, beautiful. Then if you want your salmon, you can add it. Over. All right. We'll have to, we'll have to all try this out. Okay. It's simple and easy. All you need is time. What, yeah. was, what was that other thing you used that was black other than the sesame, the black and the... Nigella. Here we go. Yeah. What is that? Nigella is a seed. It's a Middle Eastern seed. It comes from uh, the daffodil. Um, it's got a cumin type flavor. And um, as I got, I get it at a Middle Eastern market. And it's just a delicious additive to so many things. It's a delicious flavor. If you like Middle Eastern flavors, Mediterranean flavors, that's your, I put it in salad. When I make Israeli salad, I add it in there. It just mm. gives things a wonderful taste. It's very unique. I also make challah. I, I just got some that. breaking news. Pardon? I just got some breaking news. What's like that? that? You hear me? Yeah. Okay, the breaking news is that that the Monashevitz company was sold to a Gentile firm. <laughs> now called Monashevitz. <laughs> 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 uh, 
That was funny. I like it. Thank you again. And You're I'm, welcome. And one Anytime. question. One question that was asked was about when do you make the bagel holes before or after they rise? Because remember, you skipped that step. I know. After. Make the balls, cover them with a uh, towel, and let them rise for 15 minutes. And then make a hole? And then, so you've got your ball made. Yes. So you have your ball that's been covered for 15 minutes, and then make the hole and drop them in the water. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. You're welcome. And I apologize for missing that step. Oh, it but I saved you 15 minutes. We'd still be going. <laughs> if you wouldn't have told us, we wouldn't have even known. Isn't that the truth? But you know, there's truth in advertising. So. All right. Thank you very much.